It's 1998 and Roderick Davis, better known by his rap name Gucci Mane, is 18 years old and he's about to graduate high school. He was selling weed and cocaine to make money and decided to go to college because he qualified for a scholarship. He continued to make money and sometimes would record songs to mess around in the studio, mostly as a hobby. After going to college for about a year doing computer programming, he would get caught selling cocaine to an undercover police officer. He was given 90 days and probation. He lost a lot of his money and was kicked out of school, losing his scholarship. He had some time to think about if this is what he wanted to do, or something else. Upon finishing his sentence, Gucci decided he should just release a mixtape, since he was already getting good at it, and he's been rapping since he was 14. He used the little money he had left to finish the tape titled Gucci Mane La Flair, presented by Straight Drop Records. He slapped them on a thousand CDs and passed them all over Atlanta. This would work out extremely well for Gucci, because he started to gain a buzz pretty fast. He saw an opportunity and decided he wanted to start his own label, where he would recruit other artists as well. Around 2001, he met a barber named Xavier, because one of Gucci's homies attended the same barber class. Xavier made beats and was trying to make a name for himself as well, under the name Zaytoven. Around the same time in 2001, Jay Jenkins, who was known as Lil Jay, has just stepped into the Georgia scene and was gaining buzz as well. Much like Gucci Mane, he spent the last few years trying to build a label. Lil J was in deep in the streets selling weed and cocaine. He was said to have over a million cash before ever considering music. He had a ton of money and was always interested in music, but initially never wanted to rap. After a few run-ins with the law and having a new baby, he wanted to focus more on his label and began building a studio where he could manage artists under. He would sign his first few artists and start the label Young Guns Entertainment. This was going good for a while, but eventually their main artists would catch a murder case and get locked up, leaving no real talent to lead the way. He had dropped a ton of money in his studio and into his artists, so he wasn't going to let it go to waste. He changed his label name to CTE and he decided to start rapping as the main artist. He dropped his first tape, Thuggin' Under the Influence, in 2001, which featured Little John as a producer, and it immediately got a small fan base. Since Lil J had drug money to fund his tapes and new people in music, he would get all his music played at every strip club in Atlanta, which back then was a massive way to get your music heard. He went around Atlanta getting his music played over the next couple months. He decided to change his name to Young Jeezy and continued to drop back-to-back -back mixtapes like Trap or Die with DJ Drama, until solidifying himself in the Atlanta rap scene. He did this until 2004, when Def Jam signed him for a massive amount of money. With Gucci Mane and Jeezy leading the way in Atlanta rap, it was only inevitable that a collab would come soon. In 2005, Gucci Mane and Jeezy would record two songs together. The first song was Black Tees, which was a response to Dem Franchise Boy's hit song, White Tea. And the second song was So Icy, or just Icy. So Icy would go crazy in the streets almost immediately, and would then be featured as the main single on Trap House 1. The song was such a massive hit that even high schools across the country banned the iconic snowman tee that Jeezy wore in the video. But as time went on, rumors surfaced that Jeezy may have been upset with how things went. Although it's still not 100% clear why Jeezy was upset, we can assume it has something to do with the fact that he wanted the song to be on his upcoming album. He quickly took to the studio to release a diss track titled Stay Strapped, where at the end of the song he would put a $10,000 bounty on Gucci's So Icy chain. Real talk, I got a bounty on that shit, 10 stacks, man, you know Jeezy hey. pay. Jeezy would start to distance himself from Gucci and cause some strain on their friendship. Gucci would also get upset at the fact they could never perform their song live, which he felt they were missing out on a huge part of promotion. Because once again, this is in the days where live shows made a huge impact on getting your music heard. But Jeezy didn't stop and he continued the beef. Over the coming weeks, the petty beef would turn into something much more. One summer evening, Gucci would go home with the stripper after a party, just a month after the So Icy hit dropped. Five men stormed the home where Gucci was staying, armed with pistols, brass knuckles, and duct tape. They would get into a physical altercation, pistol whipping the stripper and hitting Gucci in the face. One of the men allegedly yelled, shoot him. Upon realizing his life was at risk, Gucci shot back. Some people say he reached for his gun, where other stories say he may have disarmed one of the men and took his. He shot the gun, killing one of the men as the others ran off. Three days would go by until someone found the body of the deceased man in the woods behind an elementary school. When the smoke cleared, authorities identified the man as Pookie Locke one of Jeezy's prodigies under his CTE label. After nine days, Gucci Mane would turn himself in, claiming self-defense. He released a statement saying, he's not a murderer, but he was scared for his life, and he had to be a man about it. The case would later be dismissed after his eyewitness confirmed that Gucci acted in self-defense when five men tried to rob him. 
Going forward, Jeezy would still deny any involvement with Devani, despite Pookie Lock being directly tied to him in his CTE label. Gucci Mane would go public saying he suffered from PTSD from this event, and would shoot jabs about it in his raps years later. One of the most famous lines he stated was this. The two would continue this feud for over 15 years, until November 19, 2020, where they were put in the same room as each other. In 2020, during the world pandemic of COVID-19, record producers Timbaland and Swizz Beats would start a webcast series titled Versus. With rappers unable to perform, this was a great way for hip-hop fans to watch their favorite rappers go head-to-head, -head, showcasing their hit songs in a battle-like competition. After Jeezy was invited to the show, he requested to go up against Gucci Mane, thinking it would bring good entertainment seeing the longtime feud go head-to-head. -head. After the show got closer, shots were already being fired, mostly from Gucci's end. Days leading up to the show, Gucci would post memes on his Instagram about Pookie Lock, as well as insulting Jeezy's outfit that he wore for his upcoming album. As the show went on, it would gain over 1.8 million viewers on Instagram alone. It started out slow, but things would inevitably heat up as the rappers played hit songs as well as some of their old diss records. By the end of the show, they would make history when they performed their hit song So Icy together for the first time in 15 years. After the song was performed, the two would have a brief but wholesome exchange of words. It led many viewers to believe this was the end of their long-lasting beef. Since the show, Jeezy has spoken out saying he feels better, hoping they can put this all behind them. Since then, rumors have come out online about a possible collab album coming soon. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this content, consider liking and subscribing for more.